Hi, I'm Caleb, and welcome back. Um, today I'm looking at a CAD CAM package um, called Cut2D. It's from a company called Vetric. I think that's how you pronounce it anyways. I could be wrong. But anyways, I started off this series by pointing out basically that I wanted to review and look at a bunch of different um, CAD CAM packages. Um, my only experience thus far has been using... Um, Inkscape and MakerCam to make G-Code for my ShapeOco 2. And I feel like there might be a better application out there if I spend a little bit of money or possibly poke around for a little bit better open source software. So anyways, without further ado, we're going to go through this, kind of doing a little bit of a review or run through of this software. What we're going to do basically is make a iPhone stand, which should be pretty close to the same thing as I made in Inkscape and MakerCam um, in the previous video. And that will actually be our template that we make throughout all of these review videos because I kind of want somewhat of a scientific approach to it. And I think that by doing the same project in each one, uh, at least for me anyways, I think I'll get a better feel of all of the software and be able to look back on all these videos and say, ah, I think that was the one I liked the best. And that's how I'm going to choose what I actually settle on using. So hopefully that's helpful to somebody else as well. But if it's not, it'll at least be helpful for me. So basically, we're at the startup screen for Cut2D. Um, this is the trial edition. So you can't save anything but the um, like tutorial uh, jobs. And they have little... Uh, basically they have the geometry all drawn up and you go through a little tutorial video and it has a PDF which actually is probably one of the plus sides of the software is it has really 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 good um, tutorials so you get to understand the software throughout like five tutorials and I think you can get off uh, and go pretty fast after that so I like that I like that it's well documented in a way that works for me anyways. I'm much more a visual learner. I like being able to hear somebody um, and you know talk about the software and, and then also demonstrate it in action. And I learn better than if I'm reading a manual. So I like that they actually went through the process of doing that. Um, but basically, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. We click on that. And the first thing it asks us for is to create the or it asks us about the material, the size of the material, and all that kind of stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is I think I'm going to I'm, I chose millimeters or inches. It keeps it kind of memorizes what you prefer. So that's that. I'm going to leave it like it is right there. And the thickness of the material is that I'm working with is you know 19. Point 0 0.5 millimeters. Um, you can actually change the zero point. So you can actually zero out um, to the table. So if you had like a probe that was built into the table or something that the machine could zero to, it could actually know then that it has to add um, material for where the material actually is. I think that's kind of a neat idea possibly, but since I'm used to having it zeroed out, uh, zeroed out on top of the material, I'm going to leave it like this. The other neat Thing here is that we can actually change the origin point. Um, right now it's set in the lower uh, left hand corner but you could actually change it to the center or anywhere else of the four corners which I've seen a lot of people talk about they like um, running their jobs from a center origin point especially if they have like a sign that's round or something like that so I can I can see that being kind of a cool thing but right now I'm gonna leave it back where it was and you can do some offsets on the origin points and we're just going to hit OK. And after we do that, we're basically presented with all of the, our draw, uh, draw icons. I kind of like this in some respects. In other ways, I don't like this. It seems like it doesn't have very much functionality. In reality, it has all the functionality that you really are going to run into for 2D drawing. But it's just like it feels so simple. But in, the, in that same respect, everything's, you know, kind of consolidated to one area whereas like in Inkscape where it's a more robust um, drawing application everything is all over the place because it has so much different um, 
capabilities. And a lot of those things probably aren't very valuable to us in the realm of what we're doing here. So what we're going to do first is make the outside rectangle. And these are the points where it's going to be made and that we want it at zero, zero. And we want the anchor point to be the lower left-hand corner. This is really cool. I like how you can actually make the anchor point in the center of the square. In Inkscape, you're, you're basically left with, by default anyways, where it's anchoring right here. Um, we're going to make it have a radius, and that's the radius we want. And I think we want this to be 90 by 50. And we hit Create, and boom, we have the outside profile. And then we can also make, without doing anything else, we can make our, our other, um, other rectangle that will make the insert uh, pocket for the iPhone to actually sit in. And we're going to want that one to actually be 65 millimeters by 18 millimeters. Okay, we created that. Now that that's created, I think I'm going to do this right now because I kind of ran through this obviously beforehand. So I'm going to move that up to right there. Oh, crap. I made a mistake. Okay, I should have done this first. I should have actually selected this, but it, eh, it doesn't matter. We're good. So we have two of them, unfortunately. So delete that. Pretty easy to do that. Okay, I'm going to first select this one, and then I'm going to shift select the neck or the outer outside larger um, rectangle, and then I'm going to use this button right here to center horizontal or horizontally. <clears throat> and that's basically just going to center it. And now we we're done. We're done drawing. That's how how long it took to actually draw those two rectangles. And we know that they're where they should be. Next button we're going to push is this um, switch to toolpath tab. And basically it just collapses the drawing tab. It's right there still, but collapse that. And we have on the other side we have the toolpaths. And I guess the idea is that you have your drawing over here, and then you move over to toolpaths on the other side of the screen, and it to just consolidate stuff. So we want to unselect everything. And I'm going to select the inside one first. And as you can see, there's create pocket tool. So we're going to click that. And the first thing on the list is the cut depth. We want to start at zero zero, and we want to go 14 millimeters. I think that's right. Yeah, you know, kind of cool that it memorizes that for me. And right here we have the tool that we're going to use. And we can actually hit select here, and we have this cool tool data, tool database. Um, and this is something I actually like about the software more than most things about it, is I like the idea of saving my all of my inventory of bits that I have in this thing and it has the spindle speed that you're running that you want to run at it if you have you know the ability to to change that that's cool the feed rate the plunge rate um you have the different over all of the all of the different settings are right here and i think that's really cool because i think that'll speed up the process for me if i actually chose a software to use over some other softwares potentially that don't have this kind of feature because you don't have to think about how fast you you want to run that that tool because if you're running through a certain type of wood you know it's shouldn't technically affect too much the feed rates um, now on a shape oko that's a little bit of a different situation because the machine flexes and is not as rigid as maybe a, a more expensive or more professional setup is um, so maybe you could have a little bit of a situation where you you you're like oh i have this material and i know it's it's tougher than what my normal you know feed and plunge rates are for for this um end mill and for those situations where it's a one-time event you can go to over to the edit button and you can edit that end mill and it will only be for this job it won't stay in the database so that's kind of cool the other thing you have is you have the operation, basically. You can either do the offset, which is basically what you're used to seeing um, in MakerCam, or I'm used to seeing in MakerCam. Uh, but you also have this other setup that basically kind of goes back and forth, and then you can set at the end to do the profile cut out. 
so it kind of does a uh, final pass on the outside, which I think kind of sounds cool. I'd like to actually try that and see what kind of results it ends up with on the machine. You can also do a ramp, you know, plunge, which is kind of cool. Um, could be very useful, especially if you wanted to use an end mill that um, there is end mills that can't, you know, just plunge straight down because they actually don't have a cutting area in the inner or the, like the middle of the cutting bit. So that's a very important thing to have that capability to do that. And so we want to just hit calculate once we're happy with everything. And then it takes it instantly because or right after you hit calculate, it instantly throws you over to the 3D view so you can look at stuff. And we're going to pop right back over to the 2D and click on the profile. Got to hit close on that. And then we go over to the create profile toolpath. And it's already set up basically. No, this is kind of boring. Um, 19.6 millimeters. That's slightly deeper than our material. Should be fine. Um, tool is fine because we're happy with it. This is neat. You can actually change. This is, I, I don't know why this is neat, but I think it's cool that you have the options here of having it cut on the outside or the inside, which I guess you have on um, MakerCam too. And then you can do it, you know, right on the line, which I suppose on MakerCam, I believe there's a follow the path, which I guess would do the same thing. But anyways, we're going to leave it like that. And you can add tabs. I'm not going to add tabs, but basically if we were to add tabs, you can basically go in here and hit edit tabs and you can click right there, right there, you know, and you can click on it once you, you know, and drag it around. It's kind of cool. You can delete the tabs if you don't want them. Hit calculate. This is cool right here. Basically because my material that I, the, the thickness of the material that I set up in the in this job before I started really was 19.05 and the fact that I wanted to I told it that this cut is going to be deeper than that it's actually warning me and saying are you sure you want to do that so if you have like an aluminum table or something like that and you don't want to cut all the way through this thing will kind of protect you from your own stupidity if you're you make a mistake or you know that kind of situation so that's cool and no tabs yeah I know no tabs I'm never going to get to cut this out because I can't save it because it's an evaluation copy. But anyway, so we can see the paths and we can see the material. We can change the material, you know, to something else. And the neat thing here is if you're doing a job for a customer or something, you could totally, you know, save the image. In fact, there's a button, save preview image. But the other neat thing is that we can hit preview all tool paths and it actually goes through and shows you what it looks like. And basically this green is because I put a fill in, a global fill, which basically that states that you did not cut all the way through the material. Um, and it shows, what, you know, kind of helps contrast the, the depth of the cut. And we can delete the waste material right there. So we're left with nothing but the finished product. And we can kind of look at it and be like, oh yeah, that's really cool. And so that's basically it. We've made an iPhone you know, stand. And to export, basically, you just simply, you go over here to the save tool path. You can either save individually, which one you want, if you want to save them all as individual files because they have different tools and you don't like to have a, so it has a tool change, all that. Or you can also output all visible tool paths to one file. So basically like that. And I think, well, yeah, if you, check them like this, and then have that checked, then you're good. Unfortunately, though, as it points out, we're in a trial version. We cannot save it. But one last thing that I wanted to point out is the post-processor selection. It has a massive library of post-processors, which is really cool. Uh, EMC2, which is Linux CNC now, is right here. So you have a bunch of options there. Not sure exactly what the different things mean, but if I, you know, actually was going to cut something, I would probably just have to research it and figure it out. So that's kind of cool. So for me, probably something like that would be what I would use as the post processor. It has Mach 3 in here as well. And it also has some generic ones that can be used for, um, for the, uh, for Garble or GRBL or 
gerbil, whatever you um, call that shield um, situation on the on the Arduino. So it's kind of a pretty cool program, and yeah, I, I think it's kind of neat. I like some of the features. I like the 3D view in the preview. I like the simple draw, you know, functionality on it. I like the fact that it's got tutorials. It's only 150 bucks, so it's within my price margin. It does CAD and CAM, and it does it well, according you know, from what I can see. Obviously, I haven't actually cut anything in it yet, so. And I don't know if I will right off the bat. I might actually do one of the tutorials because you can actually save those and output them to G-Code. So I might actually do something like that in the future if I decide that this is one I'm really serious about looking at. Um, the other nice thing that about this or maybe positive thing for you is if you are... Uh, Vetric also makes another program that's very popular called VCarve Pro. But VCarve Pro is like $600 very expensive as far as I'm concerned, but it does a lot of cool features and has, you know, two and a half D um, plus V carving um, capability, which is kind of neat. But the neat thing is for this software is that it has a upgrade license that you can actually buy from to upgrade your, you know, your version of cut 2D to V carve pro. So I think for I think so you have to buy this software for $150 and I think the the upgrade license to VCar Pro from this is like 480 or something like that. So you save you're not really saving anything, but it's kind of one of those situations where if you think you like VCar Pro or this company and how it works, but you're not wanting to spend $600 on VCar Pro, you could to, you could realistically say I'm going to buy Cut 2D and mess with it and use it and everything like that and eventually say oh you know what i really like this software i really like how it works i'm going to throw the rest of the money at vcar pro so because i want to do some of these other more advanced features and different you know paths and everything that are that this software can't do and you spend a little bit extra money you know a couple bucks extra to to have the option of not spending a ton of money on it right off the bat so yeah, that's basically Cut 2D. Um, I think it's a good piece of software. I I don't know. It's definitely on my list of things that I potentially might use. But as I said, this is the first one that I've tried. And I think that there's a lot of other software out there that I want to try before I make any kind of crazy decision on throwing away money. So thanks for watching. Hopefully that was helpful. If it's If it was... Please like the video below if you want me to be depressed and lay in bed all day and not do anything. Dislike the video. Have a good day and keep on making things. Bye.